Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We're taking a look today at another HP Envy X360 with a 13 inch display. This one is powered by Intel. The prior one we looked at had a Ryzen processor. And we're going to take a look and see how this one compares in just a minute. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this is on loan from HP. So we're done with this. It goes back to them. All of the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this laptop is all about. Now the price point on this one is about $1,000 as configured. There are some lower configurations that might cost a little bit less than that. They all have a 13.3 inch display running at 1920 by 1080, basically a 1080p display. That is a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, so you don't have as much height as you might see on some newer laptops we've been reviewing lately, but the screen looks pretty nice. It's very bright, 1,000 nits. Uh, one thing to note, though, is that the viewing angles for an IPS display are quite uh, narrow on this one. Uh, some people like that because if you're on a plane, it's going to be harder for your neighbor to see what you're doing on your computer, but it's a little bit more difficult if you have people coming to look at what's on your screen from the side. I also found that when I was adjusting things for the webcam, I would often not be able to see the screen as well to get myself in frame. So keep that in mind if you are looking for better viewing angles. Uh, this is a two-in-one though, so you can flip it into tablet mode and use it like a tablet. It's pretty lightweight actually. It comes in at 2.92 pounds or 1.32 kilograms. Uh, you can also have it work in display mode here and it will also work in the tent mode that we typically see. So pretty flexible two in one here. This is pen compatible, but we did not get a pen with this one. So we're not gonna be testing that today but you can buy a pen separately and write on the display if you want. Now inside our unit has an i7 1165G7 processor from Intel. That's one of the newer Tiger Lake chips with the Iris XE graphics. And that makes this actually a fairly decent casual gaming device. And we'll check out a few games on it in a little bit. It has 16 gigabytes of RAM in our demo configuration running in dual channel mode. Uh, you can also get an eight gigabyte version that's also dual channel for less money. Just note though that you cannot upgrade the RAM after you buy it. So whatever you get is what you're gonna have for life. It does have an upgradable hard drive though, an NVMe SSD. And this one came with a 512 gigabyte SSD. And there's also a 32 gigabyte Intel Optane device on board too. Now this is the output from the built-in webcam. It's 720p, nothing spectacular, but it's good enough to get the job done. As I noted earlier, you do have to angle the display a little bit higher to get yourself in frame, depending on how you're sitting and the desk that you're sitting at. Uh, so when you do that, you will lose a little bit of the image due to the very narrow viewing angles on this display. There is a shutter though for the camera. If you push this key here on the keyboard, it will disable the camera and put up a little uh, block in front of the lens. And when you push it here again, it will disable that. So you don't have to put tape up there to keep it uh, private if you want. The keyboard is very nice on this in line with other HP NV keyboards we have looked at. It is backlit, nicely spaced keys, very comfortable to type on with decent travel here. It feels pretty nice. The trackpad also feels very nice as well. There's a fingerprint reader down here if you want to get into your computer a little bit quicker. It does not support any of the Windows face recognition stuff, so that will be your biometric option, but overall the input on this is pretty nice. Now, unlike the AMD version of this laptop, this one has a Thunderbolt 4 port on board. Uh, that port is right here. So you can use Thunderbolt data devices like docking stations and super fast hard drives. Uh, you could also hook up an external GPU if you wanted to through that. And this is a full service port, so you can charge the laptop through the port and get video out along with those data devices. And there's a lot of cool docking stations out there to do that for you. Next to that Thunderbolt port is a full-size USB 3.0 port over here. It does have a little door on there to keep the laptop thin. So when you go to plug in your cable, you just have to pull that door down so that it will fit on the port. And you got a headphone microphone jack there. On the other side, we have a micro SD card slot for your cameras and whatnot. You got another one of those funky USB ports here. And then this is the power adapter port. So you can charge it with the Thunderbolt port if you want or plug the included power adapter into here. 
And one thing you could do is have a docking station at your desk. You could plug it into the Thunderbolt dock when you're at the office and keep the AC adapter in the bag so you never forget it. Now it comes with a 65 watt power adapter, pretty compact, easy to carry around with you. And again, it plugs into that barrel connector. Battery life on this is not bad. If you keep the display brightness down and stick to the basics like web browsing and word processing and that sort of thing, you're looking at probably about eight and a half to nine hours of usage out of this. But if you have the brightness up high and really put the computer under load with games or other demanding activities, that of course will eat into the battery life a bit more. Let's take a look now and see how it performs. All right, let's take a look at some web browsing here first and we'll see how everything loads up. Now, of course, this is running with the latest and greatest i7 processor, so I don't expect there to be any real performance issues. As you can see here, when we're browsing the web, everything is loading up very quickly and responsively. It also has a Wi-Fi 6 radio built in, so if you have one of those newer Wi-Fi 6 routers, you should be able to take advantage of that. So altogether, decent performance for web browsing, word processing, and the basics. A little bit earlier, we ran our YouTube test where we looked at a 1080p 60 frames per second video. That played back just fine, no drop frames. So if you're doing Twitch and a lot of other video streaming services, including Netflix and Prime Video and everything, you shouldn't have any issues with multimedia here. And on the browserbench.org speedometer benchmark test, we got a score of 156. That puts it right in line with what we saw on the Dell XPS 13 with the same processor. And it also puts this one slightly ahead on that web benchmark versus the Ryzen version of the X360 13. Now the speakers on the laptop are downward firing on the left and right hand side here. They actually sound pretty good, a good range of sound, nice and loud, good stereo separation, but they will sound a little different depending on how you have the laptop configured. So right now we're in that laptop mode. Those speakers are firing against my desk and that will impact how it sounds. And if I move it into display mode here, the speakers will now be pointing up and they'll sound a little bit different. So what you have the laptop resting on and what mode you have it in uh, will impact the quality of the audio, but it does sound overall pretty good for its size. So let's take a look now at gaming. And again, we've got the Iris XE graphics on this device and we have Red Dead Redemption 2 loaded up. I am running this at 720p at the absolute lowest settings. And although I couldn't get my frame rate counter to pop up, it looks like we're getting about 25-ish frames per second. It's not quite 30, but it's playable. And I'm guessing in some areas you might go up a little bit higher and other areas maybe dip down a little bit lower, but this kind of gives you the threshold that uh, this will reach. And I think it's pretty cool that you're able to get this working in a playable fashion on a computer without a discrete GPU. And that's one of the strengths of this graphics chipset. Let's take a look at a few other games. So here is the 2016 version of Doom running at lowest setting 720p. And we were getting about 40 to 60 frames per second on this one, not too bad. Uh, next up is GTA 5, 1080p lowest settings. We were doing about 30 frames per second, give or take. So also very playable for another Rockstar game there. And we also tried out The Witcher 3. This is 1080p lowest settings. And here we were hovering at or about 30 frames per second. Uh, so overall, it's performing fairly close to what we've seen on other Tiger Lake chips that we've looked at but this one is running slightly behind some of those other computers. So if we take a look at the 3D Mark Time Spy benchmark test, we got a score of 1,332. That puts this one below where we saw the Dell XPS 13 come in with the same processor. So HP might have tuned this one a little bit differently for thermal reasons. It does though come very close graphically to the 15 inch version of this laptop with one of the new Ryzen 7 5700U processors. But note the CPU score, that new Ryzen is much faster on that portion of the test. But this version of the NVX360 13 is a little faster than the Ryzen version we tested a few months ago. And you can see how the scores played out there on screen. And on the 3D Mark stress test, we got a failing grade of 93.6%. 97% is passing on that test. You can also see the temperature the computer was running at when that test concluded. Uh, that is not unusual for one of these small thin and light ultra books for a score. Uh, they are small, it's hard to move a lot of air out of these things quickly and quietly. 
so they will occasionally throttle down or you might see a hit in game performance every once in a while uh, because the computer is noticing its temperature getting too high beyond where HP would like it to be. I would suggest keeping the airflow as clear as you can. So there's an intake here at the bottom and it's going to exhaust the air out the back. So definitely don't put it down on carpet or something that would block the airflow because that will impact your performance more significantly. And one thing with these Intel chips is that the fan will kick on even when you're doing more basic work. I found when I was browsing that NASA website a little bit earlier, there was a 3D animation that required a little bit more active cooling. So there will be times when the fan kicks on and you'll hear it. And if you're very sensitive to fan noise, uh, this may not be for you. It's not an obnoxiously loud fan, but it does come on and you will hear it, especially if you're in a quiet room trying to get work done. All right, one last thing to take a look at, and that is Linux compatibility. We've got Ubuntu 21.04 loaded up here. Everything seems to be working just fine. We've got video, audio, Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth. All of that was detected properly. The touchscreen is working for taps here, but I'm not able to drag the windows around. But beyond that, it seems like everything else booted right up and like other Intel Tiger Lake devices, you should be able to get Linux running on this one. Overall, a nice thin and light laptop. It's very similar to the 13 inch AMD version we looked at, but you get a little bit more performance out of it for games. Uh, you also, of course, get that Thunderbolt port on here too. And altogether, a nice little Ultrabook that performs pretty well, but slightly below where we've seen other Tiger Lake chips come in. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Zybin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, Tom Albrecht, Jim Callagher, Hot Sauce and Video Games, and Brian Parker. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.